Hello everyone, this is our presentation about cost, volume, profit analysis. For the begin, I would like to say some introduction about it. So, CVP analysis is useful for calculating the units that need to be sold to break even or to achieve a target operating income or target net income. Managers also use CVP analysis to guide other decisions, many of them strategic decisions. Consider a decision about choosing additional features for an existing product. Different choices can affect selling prices, variable costs per unit, fixed costs, units sold and operating income. CVP analysis helps managers make product decisions by estimating the expected profitability of these choices. Strategic decisions invariably entail risk. CVP analysis can be used to evaluate how operating income will be affected if the original predicted data are not achieved. Say, if sales are 10% lower than estimated. Evaluating this risk affect other strategic decisions a company might make. For example, if the profitability of this line in sales seems high, a manager may take actions to change the cost structure to have more variable costs and fever fixed costs. In practice, I use three different methods to realize CVP analysis. These methods are contribution margin method, equation method and graph method. The equation method and the contribution margin method are most useful when managers want to determine operating income at few specific levels of sales. The graph method helps managers visualize the relationship between units sold and operating income over a wide range of qualities of units sold. These methods are shown in following instance. Emma Frost is considering selling GMAT success, a test prep book and software package for the business school admission test at a college fair in Chicago. Emma knows she can purchase this package from a wholesaler at $120 per package with the privilege of returning all unsold packages and receiving a full $120 refund per package. She also knows that she must pay $2,000 to the organizers for both rental at the fair. She will incur no other costs. She must decide whether she should rent a boat. So for the next calculating is good to remember these fixed costs, variable costs and selling price. Contribution margin method. Emma begins by identifying which costs are fixed and which costs are variable and then calculates contribution margin. The boot rental cost of $2000 is a fixed cost because it will not change no matter how many packages Emma sells. The cost of the package itself is a variable cost because it <coughs> increases in proportion to the number of packages sold. Emma will incur a cost of $120 for each package that she sells. To get an idea of how operating income will change as a result of selling different quantities of packages. Emma calculates operating income if sales are 5 packages and if sales are 40 packages. 
as you can see on the slide. Another method is equation method. It's another way how to uh, calculate operating income. The last method is graph method. The graph method helps managers visualize the relationship between the units sold and operating income over a wide range of quantities of units sold. Before you start to design a graph, you need to know variable cost, fixed cost, selling price of, of accurate sold units. Then you might create a total cost line depend on variable and fixed cost. The, the cost line is right here. <coughs> In the end, you might create a total revenue line depend on the selling price of accurate number of sold units. This line is here. <clears throat> the intersection of a aforementioned line is called as the break-even point. The break-even point emerges when the difference between cost and revenues is equal to zero. On the next slide, you can see how to calculate the break-even point. <coughs> so for our instance, there is no sense for Emma to rent a booth at the, at the fair if her sales won't exceed 25 units. CVP analysis works best as an approximation method. Hence, there are a few assumptions that are used here. First of all is the ventability of data and linearity of total costs and revenues in valid scope. Second is a constant selling prices. Prices are not changing. Costs could be divided to fixed and variable. Fourth, fixed costs are constant. Variable costs are linear in valid scope. Cost of in manufacturing inputs are constant. Efficiency of manufacturing and productivity is also the same. It doesn't change with the time. Analysis includes just one type of product or package of products. Revenues and costs are fixed to one volume base. Volume of production is equal to volume of revenues. It does not include change in volume of intercompany stocks. Because of those assumptions, uh, hence there are limitations. For example, if there is an assumption that total sales and total costs are assumed to be linear. But for example, if company sells more products, the variable costs may decrease thanks to increase in efficiency and productivity in the factory. The same about the productivity and efficiency of company separation. Uh, if company uh, sells more products, uh, the productivity and efficiency might change this time. Uh, in some cases, it's difficult to divide cost on fixed and variable. Moreover, when fixed costs, when reaching some volume, can change. CVP analysis assumes no change in the inventory quantities. When changes take place in the inventory level, CVP analysis becomes more complex. And not very useful. If any data like price, cost, sales changes, then the overall CVP analysis also must be adjusted. And this is one of the actual limitations. This method can be very complex in case of multi-product analysis, when different products typically yield different contribution margins and are producing various volumes with different costs. In this case, the idea of and advantages of CVP analysis are greatly limited. Thank you for your attention.